Hi friends, we are starting a face to face offline batch in Bangalore with SS Academy. That is for CA final financial reporting paper number one. I yeah, will be taking exactly two months from 1st November to 31st December. We will complete it. It is starting from 1st November 2022. Yes, and in Jayanagara branch of SS Academy, we have morning batch and evening batch will be at Seshadripuram SS Academy. Right. And if the student is missing because of any reasons, right, they are going to get a backup class. All right, we'll ensure that their things, I mean, they will study and complete. And from the face to face batch, you know the benefits out of it. We'll be completing the syllabus in time. You don't need to postpone and you don't need to compromise for your goals. See you in the class. Please share this information with your friends. That will help me and as well. Thank you. Hi friends, let's look at the lesser books of accounting in days 116. In case of lesser, you are supposed to classify the lease. Classify as you know that is either operating lease or finance lease. How do you classify? That is based on the recent rewards related to ownership. If the recent rewards related to ownership are with lessee, then it is obviously a lease. If it is with lesser, then it is an operating lease. Okay, then how do you decide whether it is with lesser or lessee? They have given five features of it, which are same as accounting standard 19, nothing is new. Right. One, the ownership is getting transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. Without any extra payment, it is an automatic transfer. Once he clears the all the lease payments, then it will be transferred. It's like exactly higher purchase situation. Situation number two, lessee has an option to acquire the asset by paying some, some amount which is less than the fair market value, which is less than the fair market value, then yes. Yeah, I mean he, and which is very, I mean yeah, the offer price is lower than the fair market value. So automatically it is reasonably certain that lessee is going to exercise the option. The third is the lease period is um, is significant part of the economic life of asset. Generally I can say above 75% of the life if it is there, then I may consider it. That is my professional judgment. Fourth one, the I, asset is a uh, different type. The I mean, what do you say? Specialized nature of asset. Then also, because if it is a specialized nature of asset, automatically lessee is lesser is not a full my dear. You would have collected the total amount of the asset along with the, the return what he wants exactly. So that's why you can treat it. Then next point. The last point is on the date of inception. Okay, that on the date of inception, the present value of the minimum lease payments are substantia substantially equal to the fair market value of the asset. It is the calculation is supposed to happen on the date of inception, my dear, not on the date of commencement of the lease. Date of commencement, the rental interest will be recorded. Date of inception, only the assessment will be taking place. Assessment, whether it is a finance lease or operating lease, will be taking place on the date of inception. Date of inception means which date, sir? That is the lease agreement date or the date on which the important terms and conditions are agreed by both the parties, whichever is earlier you are supposed to take. Right. You are already in the books of lesser, my dear. So, whenever there is, I mean, in case of, you are already in the books of lesser, for discounting, you have only one option, that is IRR of the lease. IRR means what? At what rate the lesser is earning? Here, real rate of return, that's all. Real rate of return, you are supposed to take it. And with respect to lease payments, what you have seen in my earlier video for lessee books of accounts, yes, exactly, same thing you will be able to, I mean, same LO only supposed to be considered. Next, but if it is an operating lease, what do you do? Obviously, asset will be in your own books of account, my dear. Correct, now, asset will be in your books. And uh, so, since asset is your books, you will be depreciating as per India, so India 16, either cost model or revaluation model, whichever is applicable to you. Right, and uh, the lease payments, your, uh, I mean, uh, lease receipts, obviously, the lease receipts from the lessee are going to be recognized in straight line basis with the help of the deferred rent account the help of the deferred rent account it has to be straight lined my dear correct now here sir, my increment in the lease is exactly equal to indexation or something. these are all not relevant with respect to in days one month. there was such exemption under in day 17 but not under 116 okay right. next when it comes to finance lease but it is a finance lease for me i'm lesser okay it may be a finance under that circumstance recent rewards with respect to the asset are not with you then you will be crediting the asset then I should debit it. Debit the asset for what amounts? 
debit the asset at the net investment in the lease. What is net investment in lease? That is nothing but present value of the gross investment. Okay, what is gross investment? Gross investment is nothing but LO. That is, uh, I mean, lease payments, MLPs, MLPs plus UGRV will be taken. MLPs plus UGRV will be taken. This MLP will be already including GRV. This MLP must be already including the option price. Correct. Now, if the lessee has taken the option, then he must be he must be paying me some amount. That amount obviously already included it. Yes, on the balance sheet date, as usual, my dear, the total. I mean, every installment is going to be bifurcated into two parts. One is the interest part. Another one is the re receipt of the principal amount. Correct. Interest part obviously will be transferred to profit. Here, next one more point is there. With respect to UGRV, with in this regard, there was no question asked so far. You can refer my India's made easy book. One beautiful question is there. Okay. With respect to UGRV, UGRV is an expected money. UGRV is not a contractual amount. UGRV is not a liability to the lessee. UGRV is a receipt to the lessor. Yeah. I mean, we are telling that you have to pay me 1 lakh rupees guaranteedly. But I am expecting I will receive 1 lakh 20,000 rupees. Because he will be taking care of the asset carefully. The 20,000 is expected receipt to the lessor, but it is not an obligation to the lessee. Got it? Right. That's why UGRV will be taken into, it is a receipt to the lessor. So UGRV will be, will be taken into the calculation of IRR for the lessor. But, okay, this is not at all considered from the lessee's angle. Right. Next point. UGRV is supposed to be regularly reviewed. You have to look at. I mean, I'm expecting 20,000 initially. It may go to 25,000. It may come to 15,000. If there is an increase, now you can ignore it. But if there is a decrease, that has to be in which year, in which year your expectation is changing. The present value of that number has to be adjusted in the same year with respect to interest. With respect to interest only will be adjusting. To understand this, you have to do one sum. But I told you, our India's made easy book, you will find one good book, good one. From there you will get. Next to my dear. All these charts are available. All, these are all from my fast track book on financial reporting. That will be very much helpful for quick revision just towards the examination. Fine. Next point. Suppose sir, land and building, land and building leads sir, this is. Yeah, we have taken, comp I mean, I have taken this entire building means the land is also taken lease. And building is also taken on lease. Got it? Then what are you supposed to do? Sometimes what happens, land may be, uh, land is always operating lease because considering the life of the land, land, land life is inf infinite. So it is operating lease. But building life may be 40 years. Suppose if you have taken this building for 40 years, building lease is finance lease, wherein land lease is equal to operating lease. That's why what are you supposed to do? You have the total MLP what you get it because you are lesser. Whatever the amount you get it, you are supposed to bifurcate it between the land MLP how much and the building MLP is how much. Sir, in which ratio will do it? It is in the ratio of the relative fair values of the leasehold interest. I repeat once again, it is not the fair market value of own. No. The fair market, I mean, a relative fair market value of the leasehold interest, not the freehold. It is leasehold interest. Okay, but for examination purpose, forget about what is exactly the reason they will be giving you in the question very clearly. So, your total amount of lease payments per annum that is supposed to be bifurcated, bifurcated accordingly. Land lease, you will say operating lease and SLM method you will follow. And if it is a finance lease, then automatically net investment in lease account, bifurcation of installment between the interest and principal receipt all will happen. Next small concept is sublease accounting, my dear. Sublease accounting say A has A has leased to B, B has leased it to C. Correct na? A accounting is very simple. A is a lessor. Correct na? C accounting is also simple. C is a lessee. Correct na? He doesn't he doesn't have any double role here. But B accounting is what crucial because B from the first agreement point of view he is a lessee. From the next agreement point of view he is a lessor. Correct. So both you are supposed to do it, my dear. He has an obligation to pay lease rentals to A. He has a right to receive it from C. So he will be in his books of account. He will be having ROUA. He will be having a lease payment as well. Got it? Right. Next. If the first receipt is a finance lease kind of thing for him, then only he can give it a finance to another party. Otherwise, the second lease B to C will be always 
operating leads that's it other than that there is no great point in it my dear friend next point manufacturer or dealer is lesser lesser he himself is a manufacturer dealer with respect to this there is one question in the rtp in the current november 2022 rtp may they have given one good question it's nothing great but yes if you refer it once that you will be you will feel comfortable with it okay right lease sir it is i mean i am the manufacturer of the car i only i only am i am selling it to the people on cash also i am giving it to you on lease also if i give myself to the lease our lease can be i'm a lesser right yes our lease can be operating lease our lease can be our lease can be a finance if it is an operating lease what do i do i manufactured control is with me then car account car will be in my books of account and as usual that nothing new entire lease receipts are going to be straight lined entire lease receipts are going to be straight lined my dear all are normal nothing is new yeah and with respect to with respect if such lease is a finance lease kya bola if the such lease is a finance lease see, he will be getting two kinds of income one is the profit on sale of normal asset if you sell it why sir i mean finance lease means what risk and rewards are given to other party that means control is transferred to next party means isn't it a sale exactly it is a sale and he is going to since it is a finance lease he is going to get a i mean higher purchase price is going to get higher purchase price means must be including the finance income so there is profit on sale of asset as well as the interest income is also is going to be there so for that what are you supposed to decide my dear first you should know what is the cost for the cost of manufacturing to you normal selling price is next one and what is the higher purchase price that is nothing but gross investment i can say in simple words okay what is one by one we'll clear it off what is the sales value amount sir very simple my dear sale amount how much i should keep in between correct now cost sale higher purchase price higher purchase price is very simple what all the installments amount total karo that is the higher purchase price that's it sale value is equal to what fair market value or present value of the mlps present value of mlps whichever is lower number should be taken the sales number okay fair market value of the asset or present value of mlps present value what rate obviously irr of the lease because you are a lesser already what about the cost sir manufacturing cost manufacturing cost you should take it as as it is minus present value of the present value of ugrv you are supposed to cut it because you are expected to receive something that present value number you are supposed to take it why should i take it present value manufacturing cost today is spent this is already a present value yeah ugrv amount which i will receive after some number of years that's why this is present value that is future value you can't take it you bring it to present value say this is i mean correct the manufacturing cost minus present value of ugrv then this is going to be your cost of manufacturing that's it the difference between the sale value to the manufacturing cost will be profit which will be recognized immediately in the year you entered into a finance lease agreement and the sale value to the higher purchase price is nothing but the finance income that will be recognized as a finance income over the period got it that is with respect to uh, when the manufacturer dealer he himself becomes the lesser next important and last point which is like sale and lease back transaction in case of sale and lease back transaction first question what you should ask right they sold it is it really a sale sir as per india's 115 that means really the control has been transferred to the other party whether really control has been transferred to other party yes then one kind of account no sir it is there they are they are telling that it is a sale but really control has not been transferred to the other party control is still with me only sir right then whatever the amount is given by the lessee to lessor will be recognized will be accounted as a loan given got my point lessee will be paying some money correct right we will be i mean we will be treating it correct now i mean uh, first we will enter into a sale contract but it is not a sale actually as per 115 but people have exchanged the money correct now one guy given money to another person that is treated as a loan given loan taken for one party loan given for another party loan taken and whatever the money will be coming back that is treated as a repayment of loan repayment of loan means installment amount installment obviously will be having you are supposed to bifurcate into two agree yeah you bifurcate into two that is the principal repayment and interest payment no sir it is exactly sales sir the control is been transferred it is a sale as per india's 115 only oh is it under that circumstance here you have to be careful 
here it is not a simple straight calculation you cannot say sale of in uh, what is that profit profit is equal to sale value my sale proceeds minus book value of the asset no it is wrong yeah point is here you are giving the asset to the other party correct you have to de-recognize the asset yes say you will say two asset but two asset in uh, two asset at what value obviously at book value next and you only have taken asset back correct that's why you are supposed to recognize the ROUA yes ROUA you are supposed to recognize ROU account is going to be debited correct at the same time are you because you are taking the ROUA you are liable to pay the future money or future uh, lease payments or not yes that's why two LO also is going to come in and if there is any difference that will become the gain or loss here the crux here is entirely ROUA amount what is ROUA amount very simple my dear carrying amount into yes, just follow I mean I can't explain you deep for a deep explanation you find some I mean what is that in YouTube channel you will get some more information okay carrying amount into present value of the lease payments divided by fair market value of asset what do I say present value of lease payments divided by fair market value of asset just apply it on the carrying amount that amount is going to be ROUA lease payments as usual my dear present value of the all future payments correct you are you are giving the asset book value is the number then difference number will be going to profit and loss here one more point is there yeah suppose fair market value of the asset is equal to 10 lakh but i sold it for 1 lakh rupees that means you got 2 lakh rupees extra from the buyer yes uh, that 2 lakh rupees you are supposed to record it as a liability you are supposed to record it as a liability my dear remember that no sir i received less money sir 10 lakh rupees is the fair market value but i sold for 8 lakh rupees then it is an asset receivable from the other party receivable from other party you are supposed to treat it why sir means i mean from that because i sold it 10 lakh asset i sold it for 8 lakh rupees i gave him 2 lakh rupees benefit na? are you full obviously nobody is fully right so that party other party will be paying you more amount of minimum lease payments more amount of lease payments so all lease payments are going to be bifurcated into two one is normal lease payment we will treat it the balance part will be treated as prepayment of your you are you are sold it for lesser money na? he has to pay you back no that's it you will be recovering the same money my dear that's it about uh, this in days 116 i hope this is useful please share it with your friends and uh, inform your friends that we have started our offline classes in ss academy financial reporting Right, paper number one, face-to-face -face batch. Thank you and wish you the very best for your exam.